This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King here in New York. We have just learned the name of the Democratic Party's vice presidential nominee. CBS News has confirmed that the party's leader in November, Kamala Harris, has chosen, there you see it on your screen, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate. He is a former congressman and a retired Army National Guardsman who was elected governor six years ago. The Democratic ticket will appear together at a rally in Philadelphia later tonight. Let's go right now to Weijia Zhang. She's at the White House. Weijia, they held this a secret right up until the very, very end. What else can you tell us about Governor Walz? And Gail, that is because this is a decision that came down to the wire for Vice President Harris. In fact, we were told that when she went to bed last night, she still didn't know because she wanted to sleep on it. But then this morning, she woke up and it came to her, Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota. And Gail, when I look at all the facts about Walls, here's what stands out. He is a winner. He was elected six times to represent Minnesota in Congress. He is now in his second term as governor. He is very popular, and he has a voting record on the issues that really lines up with Harris. Uh, after George Floyd was killed in his state, he passed a massive police reform package. He said that there would be no abortion under his watch in 2022. And on economics, he says the Democrats really need messaging and to make it more clear. And Gail, let's talk about messaging for a minute and the power of one word. In the the early days that Vice President Harris was going to become the likely nominee, we were not talking about Tim Walls. And then he went on television and he said one word. He said Republicans were weird. And then he gained a lot of attention and his profile soared. And then it never really stopped. And today, again, we can report that he will be joining Vice President Harris on the Democratic ticket and they will be stumping together in a matter of hours in Philadelphia. Gail. We should, you may a really, really good point. Two weeks ago, we were not talking about Tim Walz, but here we are this morning. Thank you. Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costas is with us now, along with CBS News contributor, that's Ashley Etienne, former Communications Director for Vice President Harris. Ashley, I want to start with you because we just heard from Ouija that Vice, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris waited till the very end, had to sleep on it overnight, and apparently made her decision this morning. What do you think went into her thought process and that she waited till, right to the bitter end? Yeah, I think the breadth of Walls' experience is probably what persuaded her most. I mean, being a military veteran, a former teacher, to a chairman in Congress, to an executive governor who rallied his state and moved his state through incredibly tough times, I think makes uh, him incredibly appealing to her and will provide her with this broad perspective that I think she needs, which is, you know, what are the challenges facing the American people? How do we implement legislation? How do we rally Congress around it? And how do we actually get it done on the ground in these states? So I think she's he's uh, he's good for her for that reason. And then also what was just mentioned, the fact that he's won in these very tough districts and these in these uh, tough red leaning districts, I think gives him um, and gives her the the ticket um, a, a leg up when it comes to going into those areas where the one and two percent, those independent and disaffected. Republicans are. He can speak to them on their level about issues that matter most to them in a way that I think Shapiro and the others could not. And that's going to be value add for her going into this next race when it's going to be decided on the margins. Ashley, we have live pictures outside of Tim Walz's home right now. I wonder if we could show those because there it is. I, I, I wonder what he's thinking at this very moment. And number two, you know Kamala Harris. Do you know if the two of them had a previous uh, friendship or partnership in any way? Well, he's got to be incredibly excited. I was just yes. um, chatting chatting with the attorney general in his state, who's very excited, not just for him, but uh, Keith Ellison, who's also excited for the governor. So I, I can imagine he's overwhelmed with excitement, but I also know him to know, I know him, as you put earlier, to be very scrappy. And so I'm, I can imagine he's ready to get in and get dirty and, and, and push back in all kinds of ways. I don't know that they had a really good, solid relationship before this process started. But neither did she with Biden, and neither, neither did Obama with Biden. So I don't think that that is, is a really deciding factor. But I will tell you that he's incredibly funny. He's, you know, direct, well, you know, um, plain spoken. And I think that'll uh, jive really well with the vice president and her personality. 
Yeah, I think people like plain speaking without being mean. Thank you very much, Ashley. And we can say Tim Walz, apparently a good neighbor. He's got a very nice lawn. Let's go now to Robert Costa. <laughs> Let's go now to Robert Costa because, Robert, people say it doesn't make a ton of electoral sense. What's your take on that and why she picked Governor Walz? Good to be with you, Gail. In the eyes of many top Democrats, close to Vice President Harris, it might not make sense electorally when you're just speaking about a map, but to top Democrats, it does make political sense because they see in Governor Walls someone who can fill the void left by President Biden. President Biden was close to organized labor in this country. He was able to go to places like the industrial Midwest. I was there with him and talk to union members and say, you have to stick with the Democrats. Don't listen to former President Trump. I'm one of you. Let's stick together as traditional Democrats. And Tim Walls, as the Minnesota governor, has built a record, but he's also built a relationship with labor and other key constituencies inside of the Democratic Party. And so he's going to help Vice President Harris rebuild that Biden-Harris coalition ahead of November, along with all of the personal characteristics he does bring to the race. As Ashley said, and as we just so ably reported, he has a personality, he has an ability to have a bit of fun, some wit, and he doesn't mind taking a shot at the GOP. And often your role as the VP is to be the attack dog who can do it with a smile. All right. Stand by, Bob. Thank you. Chief White House correspondent Nancy Cordes is in Philadelphia, where Harris and Walls, we better get used to that, Harris and Walls will kick off a tour of the battleground states. Nancy, what, what are you hearing? What can you tell us? Well, one of the things that set Walls apart from all of the other top contenders, Gail, was the fact that he has a variety of different types of leadership experience. Not only is he the chair of the Democratic Governors Association, which is a pretty powerful group, uh, he, in that capacity, he needs to kind of get all of these strong personalities pointed in the same direction. So he's got deep relationships with other governors. He's going to need that over the next few months. But he's also the only person on that list of five or six finalists who had both executive leadership experience and legislative leadership experience. He, of course, has been the governor of Minnesota for six years now. But before that, he was a member of Congress for six terms. He sat on the Armed Services Committee. He sat on Veterans Affairs. So he knows how Congress works. And you could really make the case, scale that part of the reason that Biden was able to achieve so many things on his to-do list in in his first term was because he had that kind of deep legislative experience. He knew how the levers of power in Congress work. And you can make the case now that Harris, who served less than one Senate term in Congress before she became vice president, can really use someone who has 12 years of experience on Capitol Hill. But it's also interesting, too, though, Nancy, because he was considered a dark horse. I think that's what's fascinating to many people. It seemed to have boiled down to, if you believe what you were hearing in the media, that it would boil down to Josh Shapiro and Mark Kelly. And then lately, the last over the last week or so, we started hearing the name more and more about Tim Walz. What do you make of that, how he appeared to some to come out of nowhere and it's like running a race and all of a sudden he's ahead of the pack? What I make of it is that all of these people were, uh, you know, having to go from a standing start. And remember, a few weeks ago, we weren't even thinking about any of these people being a running mate because we thought that Kamala Harris was going to be the running mate to President Biden. Suddenly, when that all changed, yes, Pete Buttigieg, probably better known to a national audience. Josh Shapiro, somebody who has been talked about a lot as a person with presidential ambitions. They had the early edge because people knew about them. But Walls proved over the course of a couple of weeks that he had really great communication ability. He had a, a way of making the case that, that some of the other top contenders didn't. And that could come in handy, uh, not in necessarily Minnesota, where Democrats haven't lost a presidential race since 1972, but in other Midwestern states, certainly like Wisconsin and Michigan, which are big battleground states this year. I'm telling you, there seems to be a lot of, there's something appealing about a guy for people who say it's comfortable talking in a t-shirt and a baseball cap as he is talking in a suit, as he is talking in a tuxedo. I know we got to go, but can we go back to Bob Costa for just a second? Because Bob, do you think that this was an attempt to satisfy the more liberal wing of the party? What are, what are your thoughts on that? It's fascinating, Gail, politically, because you look at Governor Tim Walls, and if you have, if you know nothing about him, 
you see a guy who seems amiable, easygoing, can crack a joke, talks about hot dish up in Minnesota, that famous dish they love to do, the casserole, can uh, talk about fishing. But he's also someone, it must be noted, who politically is well-liked by progressives in the House of Representatives, where he once served. Pramila Jayapal, who's the leader of the Progressive Caucus, one of the key progressives in the House, She's been a key vo uh, stakeholder for him in recent days, saying, I'd love to see Tim Walls on the ticket. So has former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She's been an advocate for him, kind of winking in recent days that she'd love to see a former House colleague land on the ticket. When you have Pramila Jayapal and Nancy Pelosi both being boosters for your vice presidential candidacy, that says a lot that even though you may seem like kind of a centrist Midwesterner in persona, politically he touches a lot of bases. Yeah, I'm so. You mentioned Nancy Pelosi, and I have to say, I just wince a little bit, Bob, because she was just here. She was just here, and when we, of course, she didn't tell us what she was thinking or who it was going to be. But now that it's out, would have certainly loved to have gotten her 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 uh, thoughts on that. Ashley, if we could go back to you for just a second, we know that she slept on it and waited till the very last minute. What do you think Tim Walz's assignment will be in this campaign? Well, I think there's one little tidbit we should all be aware of, and that both of his children were conceived via IVF. So the campaign is saying that he's going to lean into the reproductive rights fight with the vice president. This is the year of the woman. This is an advantage that she has over Donald Trump. And he's going to be an active player leaning into this issue as, as, as well. And so to have a man with this level of conviction and his personal story lean in on this issue is going to be interesting to see on the campaign trail. But they think that he'll be an asset when it comes to conveying that message to women, the threat that Donald Trump uh, and Vance pose to their reproductive rights and other rights. Uh, when you joined us um, on the broadcast earlier, you said that this was going to be a very personal feeling for Kamala Harris. This is someone you know well. So if you could just take us behind the curtain a little bit. Personal feelings how? What do you think that it really, when she went to bed last night you, and she woke up this morning, what do you think her first thought was when she said, Tim Walz is the guy for me. I think it's... I think it is two things. One, that he's proven that he can win tough races. And secondly, he's got a deep compassion and conviction for the American people and the plight of the American people. And he's seen it on every end of the political, uh, in, in every end of the, the political uh, realm and uh, field. So I think those were the things that probably took her over the edge. All right. Well, Ashley, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. All right, thank you. Thank you, All Nancy right. Cordes. Democrats will soon have a presidential ticket 13 days before their convention in Chicago and 13 weeks before the presidential election. So to recap what you've just heard, Tim Walz has been in office for five and a half years. He's a current chairman of the Democratic Governors Association. He was also in office during the crisis that followed the murder by police of George Floyd. And he will be the Democratic nominee for vice president running alongside Kamala Harris. We've been waiting for the last 48 hours about who it was going to be. Now we know. Get used to it, people. Harris, Walsh is the ticket. Our campaign coverage will continue on our streaming network with WAD, CBS News 24-7 on your local news. And tonight on the CBS Evening News, many of you will now return to your favorite morning show, CBS Mornings. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King, CBS News here in New York.